This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. As Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan urges Saudi Arabia to disclose who ordered the murder of the Saudi journalist, the Washington Post columnist Jamal Khashoggi, we end today's show looking at how U.S. universities are facing new scrutiny over their close ties to Saudi Arabia in the wake of Khashoggi's murder. We're continuing our discussion with two guests, Yarden Katz, department fellow in systems biology at Harvard Medical School, who wrote an article for The Guardian on Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman's visit to Harvard and MIT earlier this year. His piece, focusing on the kingdom's close ties to U.S. universities, is headlined, Elite Universities Are Selling Themselves, and Look Who's Buying. And in Hartford, Connecticut, we're joined by Stanley Heller, executive director of the Middle East Crisis Committee, also a member of the Coalition to End the U.S.-Saudi Alliance. Um, we're going to pick up with Stanley Heller, where we left off. Um, Stanley, the information you have is so explosive, so important. You're exposing the ties and the visit of um, the Crown Prince to the University of New Haven and Yale University. And this was before the murder of Khashoggi in the Saudi consulate in Istanbul, which at this point, though their stories have changed many times, um, the Saudi regime has admitted. There apparently was a kind of 15-man uh, hit team, uh, came in on two Saudi jets hours before Jamal Khashoggi went into the consulate to get some marriage documents he needed. His Turkish fiancé was standing outside waiting for him. Um, and among those who apparently were in that hit team was a man named um, Salah Mohammed al -Tubaygi. Um, a leading forensic um, doctor, uh, member of the Society of Forensic Medicine at King Fahd uh, Security College. Can you explain how that relates to the University of New Haven? We had objected to the University of New Haven having any ties with that uh, King Fahd Security College or Saudi Arabia as a whole. And then, after the Khashoggi killing, we, we looked at websites and noticed that the editorial board of a top Saudi forensic society included Salah al tubegi and Henry C. Lee, who is the famous forensic scientist at the University of New Haven. And so this is what we brought up. Um, at first, the university said that we think there are two al tubegis We're getting this information from the Saudis. But that pretty much has been exploded. And the name Salah al tubegi has been taken off that editorial board's uh, website. Then the university said and says, well, we're proud of what we do. We're improving the justice system of Saudi Arabia. And our response was, well, what are, what are the facts about this? What, what evidence? Have you been able to convince the Saudi government to give the remains of Sheikh Nimr al-Nimr back to his family? They executed this peaceful activist at the beginning of 2016, and his body has not been returned. Have, have they canceled the, the uh, sentence of a thousand lashes against Raif Badawi? Uh, what, what about the women? The women who had been for a long time trying to get the right to drive, these feminist activists, they're in jail. How is the Saudi or justice system improved? And as a last example, what about what happened when they grabbed the Saudi billionaires last fall? Was there any kind of due process? They, they stuck them in a hotel, the Ritz-Carlton. The crown prince, uh, what you're talking about, had, them over billions. had this group of princes um, uh, held. That's right. And they were held in this hotel. They coughed up billions of dollars. 
and then they let him go. Was there any due process? Was there any lawyers involved, any char charges, anything given to the public about this? And of course, the answer is no. So how is UNH helping? Uh, it, it, this, is, this is wrong. And, and that's the big scandal. UNH, none of these colleges should be helping. Mm. Um, there's also the, the question of Yale University, if we can get into that. You, you mentioned the, the $10 million this billionaire Kamal family has given to the Yale Law School. Um, we objected to that when that first happened a while back. But what we said is, all right, you have this Islamic center, you're interested in law, Yale University, let's have an emergency conference talking about the state of law in Saudi Arabia. So we sent a letter to the Yale University. We've mentioned this to the press. Uh, we have not yet gotten a, um, an answer from Yale. But students at universities around the country should use this opportunity and have conferences of their own. We used to call them teach-ins. It was a, co a combination of a conference and a protest. So we shouldn't lose this opportunity. Uh, w there should be protests like occurred at MIT. There, w there were protests, effective ones, uh, against cluster bombs in Rhode Island. Um, this goes back a couple years ago, and uh, the Obama administration actually stopped it. And there's been the marvelous uh, Code Pink protests in Washington, D.C., where they make those uh, mock pictures of, of Prince Salman, and they have the... Uh, they had one with um, the royal bone saw, a grisly reminder of what uh, happened in Turkey. So people should get out and protest. And then they should coordinate, uh, get a hold of us, SaudiUS.org, uh, contact us to uh, you know, coordinate their protest and educational activities. And also uh, note uh, RPM.world, which is a new anti-war network which uh, uh, combines support for Palestinians and s the Syrian democracy movement in opposition to the Saudis and our road to uh, climate destruction. The Turkish government reportedly has audio recordings showing that Khashoggi was dragged screaming uh, from the consul general's office, forced onto a table in a room, injected with an unknown substance. This is all the sort of reports that have come out over the last few weeks. Khashoggi was then reportedly dismembered by a Saudi forensic doctor and autopsy expert. Um, this is an amazing story. Uh, allegedly, now we don't know, to Baigi, who listened to music on headphones as he used a bone saw to cut a still-breathing Khashoggi into pieces. Now, again, these are reports gotten from all different places uh, in the media. Reportedly took uh, Jamal Khashoggi seven minutes to die. Um, this from Middle East Eye. Uh, the forensic doctor, Salah Mohammed El Tubaigi, put on the earphones and listened to music as um, he advised other members of the squad to do the same, saying, when I do this job, I listen to music. You should do that, too. Tubagi was recorded as saying, uh, according to this source, um, uh, uh, who was talking to the news organization Middle East Eye. Stanley Heller, as you listen to this, um, let's talk more about the University of New Haven's response and its connection to the center um, where he works. Um, the, uh, uh, he's a board member of the Society of Forensic Medicine at King Fahd Security College. Um, uh, 
I do want to turn to the University of New Haven and its partnership with this college in Riyadh. The Hartford Current recently asked the university spokeswoman, Lynn Chamberlain, about the collaboration. Chamberlain said in a statement that UNH was approached by the Saudi College for guidance as it transitioned to offering four-year degrees. She wrote, the goal then is now was to help modernize and professionalize criminal justice activities in Saudi Arabia through this educational partnership. We've been pleased with the academic professionalism of our partners, and we look forward to continuing the relationship. Uh, if you could take it from there, Stanley Heller. Well, we've called on uh, political leaders in Connecticut, both federal and state, to mount an investigation to see uh, what exactly UNH is doing with King Fahd Security College, to see if there's any connection between UNH staff and uh, this guy Al Tubegi or any of the others who uh, were alleged to take part in this killing. Um, I'm pleased to say Senator Blumenthal has responded and uh, has uh, asked uh, that Saudi—I'm uh, sorry, that the UNH college uh, reevaluate its, its program with King Fahd Security College. Um, I'm hoping that other uh, political leaders, other members of Congress and, and state officials will also uh, make statements about this. And again, but just for— It's a very for... serious thing. For people who didn't hear the first part of this discussion, while it is you're saying you don't absolutely know we're talking about the same Tubaigi, um, that from the website of the King Fahd Security College, now uh, of which he was a board member, his name has been removed as you've been pressuring the University of New Haven to find out more information. Is that right? Well, they took his name off the editorial board. But curiously, they didn't take his name off the governing board of the Forensic Society. It's still there in Arabic. And if you use the Google Translator, it's the same name in English. So I don't know why they didn't do this. It's laziness or, or whatnot. But uh, the name is still there on the governing board. Mm. Yardim Katz um, was just talking to us. Um, who is a department fellow in systems biology at Harvard Medical School, about— um, well, Yarden, let's go to you. Uh, about this issue of university ties, you are most concerned about Harvard right now and MIT, the crown prince visiting both. Um, the question of, well, um, you did this before uh, Khashoggi was killed, um, but this mm -hmm. during the ongoing uh, U.S.-backed, uh, Saudi-led coalition bombing of Yemen. The United Nations is saying it's the worst humanitarian catastrophe in the world now. Yes, exactly. So, uh, I think the Khashoggi murder is horrific, and your description of it uh, sent uh, chills down my spine. But. In terms of our evaluation of bin Salman, it, it hasn't added that much new information. We knew that he's been doing horrible things in Saudi Arabia. We knew that he's waging this devastating war in Yemen, that he's suppressing uh, opposition in other places, in Bahrain. And so uh, our work and other activists uh, started before the Khashoggi murder to point to the problematic ties between elite universities like Harvard and MIT and the Saudi government, and to use that to actually point to a much bigger web of unaccountable partnerships between universities and corporations and governments. Uh, when these partnerships are formed, all we really get as members of the public is a press release uh, from the universities saying, uh, here's a new multi-million dollar partnership, isn't it wonderful, but we don't get any of the details or the terms. And that opens up the way for a government like the Saudi government to use its ties with MIT or Harvard to uh, legitimize itself and to paint uh, an image of itself as a progressive entity or, or a, a democratic entity, where in reality, uh, it's not that at all. Mm. Um, I wanted to go to MIT Media Lab's connection um, with the Bin Salman Foundation, the Crown Prince's Foundation. Mm. Explain what the Media Lab is, and then talk about this connection, Yardam. Right. So, the MIT Media Lab is one of the most famous laboratories uh, at MIT. It was founded in the 80s, and they work on a whole range of technologies and um, various projects. Um, 
They also work on matters relating to more social issues uh, in recent years. And they have a very unique uh, business model, if you will, which is that they're funded by what are called member companies. So member companies are organizations or corporations that pay a minimum of $250,000 a year to the MIT Media Lab. And in return, they get access to the lab, to the students, they get to recruit MIT uh, community members, and they get access to intellectual property produced by the lab. So one of these member companies is uh, an organization called MISK, M-I-S-K, which is Bin Salman's uh, or, uh, organization that's ostensibly about empowering the youth. So if you look on their website, they say that they're about empowering the youth to transform society through entrepreneurship, through participation on global, on global markets, uh, et cetera. Of course, it's not really about youth empowerment, because if the youth start talking about democracy or if they um, start talking about politics, uh, they might end up in jail. Uh, however, by affiliating with the MIT Media Lab, MISC is essentially buying that progressive image that MIT has created. So they'll have exchange programs where MIT Media Lab uh, researchers go to Saudi Arabia and vice versa. And then the Saudi government will use that to put out press releases where they quote MIT researchers saying, we are so impressed with what MISC, bin Salman's group, uh, we're so impressed with what they're doing, and uh, et cetera. And so it just becomes uh, another um, uh, vehicle for them to promote their PR campaign uh, and to create the, the false impression that really MIT Media Lab and Bin Salman's MISC Foundation are on the same page, they're on the same ideological uh, sort of viewpoint. His visit also coincided, um, his visit to Harvard and MIT, the Crown Prince's visit, um, with the March for Our Lives, the student-led protests for tighter gun control. Is that right? And talk about the connection between gun control at home and the U.S. selling of weapons abroad. Of course, President Trump is right. saying whatever they find out, he is not going to cut U.S. arms sales to Saudi Arabia. Right. So, as I mentioned uh, in the first uh, segment, uh, universities were keeping this visit very secret. And so, it's not clear if it's a coincidence or, or if it was planned that way, but Bin Salman's visit did coincide with a Saturday, I believe, which was the day of the, of the March for Our Lives protest. So, all the media attention uh, was on that. And uh, so, people missed the fact that the street where uh, the media lab at MIT is located was shut down, and there was militarized police presence there. So there was this big event happening. It's as if, uh, you know, Obama came to campus. And people missed that because they were focused on the March for Our Lives. And so it played into the secrecy maneuver of these universities, whether by chance or, or, or uh, by planning. Uh, now, I think that um, the, the irony here is that the March for Our Lives is really a protest against violence. And here you have, with Bin Salman, a war criminal coming to MIT uh, and getting demos of war-related technologies like autonomous weapons, which are made by a company called um, Autonomous Robots, which are used for military purposes, made by a company called Boston Dynamics, which is an MIT affiliate. And um, so there's a real tension here. How can you, uh, as an institution like MIT, talk about ethics and making the world a better place through technology while you're demoing uh, war technologies and war machines to a war criminal? Mm. And have students, professors, staff reached out to you, Yardam Katz, and I'm going to put this question to Stanley Heller as well, from around the country? Because Harvard, Yale, um, MIT, uh, University of New Haven, though these are elite institutions, I am sh they are not the only ones that are linking up with Saudi Arabia. Right. So they're absolutely not the only ones, and I want to emphasize that. There are ties to UC Berkeley. There are ties between Bin Salman's MISC Foundation, which I mentioned, and the Gates Foundation. I mean, it's a whole web of, of ties uh, which is, uh, hasn't been uh, scrutinized in any detail, unfortunately. Uh, what I, the things that I mentioned are just a small fraction of the ties that exist. So yes, we've been contacted by faculty members who are concerned about this, by students, by activists from uh, around around the world who uh, also are protesting these ties. Some of them can't speak about it because they're scared for their personal safety, because they live in countries that um, uh, have repressive governments. And so I want to emphasize that while we're, we're uh, criticizing 
these universities, our criticism is really directed at the, at the administration and uh, at a subset of the faculty members who are involved in making these decisions and in forming these partnerships. Uh, these partnerships do not reflect the views of the broader academic community or the local community. And I think that now we're seeing a kind of small rebellion in these universities, Harvard and MIT, for instance, where students are saying, we've had enough of this. We don't want ties to war criminals. And we also don't like these partnerships, which are secret and that um, are only described through kind of vapid press releases, and we don't know what the details are. Stanley Heller, you are head of the Middle East Crisis Committee, uh, also a member of the Coalition to End the U.S.-Saudi Alliance. Let me put that same question to you. Are staff, professors, students reaching out to you around the country? And even at University of New Haven uh, and at Yale, what has been the response on campus to the work you're doing? Well, I would second the, the, the notion that our problem is certainly not with any of the colleges, but with the administration who are looking at the money and the, uh, the false glory of this. And we've had some uh, people reaching out. We're, we're happy to say that the student newspaper at UNH, uh, the Charger Bulletin, has done some fine reporting about this and has printed out our material, even though their uh, administration has never said a word to us about any of our complaints about King Fahd Security College. Mm. What are your plans now? Well, w again, uh, education and uh, protest and, and coordination, and particularly working uh, on uh, the website of the uh, um, SaudiUS.org. We understand Kathy Kelly and Voices for Creative Nonviolence is going to do a demonstration in Washington, D.C. on Election Day. Action Corps New York City is, has done a lot of good per protests. Uh, I think they did three or four protests when Prince Salman was in New York City earlier this year. So there's a lot of groups, uh, not a lot, but there are a good number of, of groups doing a lot of good work. Um, the Catholic Worker Movement, I, sh I should mm. say, they've been having a vigil about Yemen and New York for a long time. So people should try to, you know, come to our site and we'll hook people up to various and, activities all around the country. And Stanley Heller, as you talk about grassroots groups, this has gone to very much into the establishment and mainstream, particularly in Connecticut. Um, I can't think of two more vocal senators on this issue uh, than uh, Senator Chris Murphy, um, uh, as well as Connecticut Senator Richard Blumenthal. Blumenthal, Senator Blumenthal said, all American businesses and nonprofit organizations should review and reevaluate their relationships with Saudi Arabia in light of the murder, which seemingly could not have been done without knowledge at the highest levels of its government. A very strong statement. Well, I want to thank both of you for being with us. And, of course, we'll continue to follow this issue. Stanley Heller, executive director of the Middle East Crisis Committee, also member of the Coalition to End the U.S.-Saudi Alliance. And thank you very much to Yardam Katz, department fellow in systems biology at Harvard Medical School, an affiliate of the Berkman uh, Klein Center for Internet and Society at Harvard University. And, uh, Yardim, we'll link to your article in The Guardian on uh, Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman's visit to Harvard and MIT, um, that piece that's headlined, Elite Universities Are Selling Themselves and Look Who's Buying. This is Democracy Now! To see part one of our discussion, go to democracynow.org. I'm Amy Goodman. Thanks so much for joining us.